Hi, Hi Carsten. Bernard. <laughs> so, is this, uh, or what are we going to do in this one? Because I see you have failover cluster manager open. We have a look at our VMs, and there seem to be quite a few now, right? Yeah, so the, have... there, are, there are plenty. There are plenty. We last video we deployed with VM mm -hmm. fleet thirty five. Uh, benchmark VMs, let's call it benchmark VMs on mm -hmm. every node. So we have four okay. nodes times 35 is 140 VMs. And there are some other roles in our cluster. You maybe mm -hmm. remember the big VM, yeah. IOMeter, and our three Linux VMs. And then we have some additional roles in our cluster. So here mm -hmm. you see if, if we okay. do a VM dash here, you see we have Oh, the big VM is also a VM in it. Yeah. Oh, good. So, and they are they are equally distributed amongst the nodes, as I would yeah. assume, right? So you Let's have see here. That's not, the naming is nice. So we have the host name or the right. volume name in the in the name of the VM. Mm -hmm. And when we scroll down, we have zero zero one to zero three five, so thirty five VMs on the first node. Okay. You see here, there are also the owner node is the first node. The okay. fleet is there, is is very precise where it puts the VMs. And even if you look into one of the VMs here, here in the properties mm -hmm. of the role, you see the preferred owner is the host mm -hmm. two. And this is the okay. first VM of the second setting. So here, mm -hmm. if you go down, okay. they are all out. And now we want to play around with them, right? Yeah. So, do can you do me a favor and maybe have a look at one of the at one of these which which machines that it's setting at uh, to know you know of course I see can. the size. Right. Yeah. Settings. You see okay. here. This is a, this is by the way an Azure size, right? I think they emulate an A1 VM. <laughs> okay. So one processor, a weird number of megabytes, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have that. Then we have okay. our internal switch. We talked about that. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Before. There is some. Are you happy with these settings, or would you want to change? No, this? actually, actually not. And I, 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 I can be wrong, but I, th mm -hmm. I think the old VM fleet, mm -hmm. uh, with the new one, everything is better. Of course, it's a new one. <laughs> but one thing is maybe not not okay. good. But I have to double check it. Okay. Because our VM is the automatic stack uh, stop action is on save and Bernard, right. what what happens when it's on save? Yeah, I mean if you're um, if you're it, there will be quite you know the the space of the virtual machine would be reserved on disk, yes. whereas um, and this is you know currently maybe not so good because you. The, the test of this VM fleet is like, you know, you want to max out the storage capacity of your volumes that you created in order to test everything, the performance of yeah. everything. And then um, you might find out that you need additional space or so half of your VM fleet VMs cannot start because uh, of the save state, right? Um, because this one needs to be on disk um, at the time the virtual machine yeah. starts. So right. to, uh, to show this, um, mm. we just will start, I'm here in the, Mm -hmm. directory of the first VM of the first node. So we go up right. here. Yeah, that would be this one. Mm -hmm. uh, here we also have this setting. So it's on every VM. Mm -hmm. yep. Save. And if we look into the virtual machine, here's our configuration. You see the kilobytes. Yep. And when mm -hmm. I start the VM, mm -hmm. you see that our third yes. file, the VMRS uh, file, mm -hmm. is now 1.8-ish gigabyte. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is because there is a save in the VM. And uh, mm -hmm. funny story, I had a customer who was very space sensitive in their cluster and they had a lot of exchange servers and every mm. exchange server was the, was with 100 gigabytes of memory they had 140 of them so mm. uh, they didn't know about this and they they lost 14 terabytes of disk space um, mm. because this setting uh, so you have to 
rethink this setting in mm. in a failover cluster usually the virtual machines are moved to another host if you shut down mm. the host so no need for the safe state yeah. uh in a standalone server there is maybe still yeah uh, a need for that so i shut down this vm again so what what can we do about it you wanted to provide me with a little script right yeah have a look at the, <laughs> have a look at that uh, at the private chat i copied the code there so um you know it would be now your task in order to do that for the 140 vms or 145 vms or 44 yeah. um but now let's see if my partial script works you know yeah. It better to... will, my friend. I copy it just over. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so to it's. Get... Uh, I have. Yeah. To... It... No, no, I think it's not. <laughs> yeah. It's not working. I think you may have. It's two lines actually, right? So you shouldn't have. That's get always PM. the same. No. Wh why is it two lines? Get cluster resource. Yeah, so no, the go to the virtual machine and then hit um, right in the middle, make two lines out of this, so just one line. Yes, well, here, 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 before the cluster VMs. Okay. Before cluster VMs, that should go in the next line, right? No, it's always the same. You I'm can't copy. You can't copy and paste. Hey, uh, oh. it's what you know. What your video editing tool is making it about, right? So, <laughs> so it takes you know the um, virtual machines. It finds it on the cluster, and then it sets. It will set this value to uh, you know to do the job for all of the VM, VMs it could find, right? So, let's see if that works. Yeah, it's done. So let's see again in here. The PowerShell magic. I pick one of them and here shut down. So very well, Bernard. So we have done that. That's uh, <laughs> okay. that's a, a little sidestep. Uh, we can't yes. do only the necessary stuff. We have to give you more information, right? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that's the idea of a training video or sort of like, <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> so what do we have here? All right. So, um, okay. So well, now I will start the VMs, I would mm -hmm. say, right? And um, yes, and by the way, I mean, if we would have wanted to change the size of the virtual machines used for VM fleet, there is a PowerShell commandlet for doing so. Um, so yes. you could set, set fleet VM something, I think it is. Yeah. And there you could uh, specify the uh, amount of memory, the, the processes to be used, right? So you can yeah. tune that. Um, yeah. okay. But to be yeah. honest, uh, we could do a five-hour series just about <laughs> the M fleet. <laughs> okay, yeah. There are so many commandlets and there are so much great stuff, yeah. but we should concentrate on the necessary. We'll some, give you some additional information, but Bernard yeah. is right. You can change the processor count and the amount of memory. The processor count is maybe something you uh, have to think about, but we will uh, talk about it a little bit later, right? Yeah, hit 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 start. I mean, uh, I hit the start. Yeah, because and, these virtual uh, machines take some time to boot up, and yeah. uh, we could use that time for further education yeah. or not. Exactly. <laughs> so we will do that. We go to settings again. Mm -hmm. You see here, every VM is a one logical process or virtual process of VM, mm -hmm. and when we went through the settings in our uh, Azure Stack HCI cluster, there was something called core scheduler and classic mm -hmm. scheduler. Mm -hmm. And because of security reasons, uh, an Azure Stack HCI cluster and also uh, um, from Windows Server 2019, Hyper-V clusters use then by standard the core scheduler. Core scheduler um, is main purpose is to not put two different VMs on the same threads of the same of the, of one core. So in our example, we have only one core VMs, and so basically the core scheduler will only use one thread of a core, not the second one. So we lose a bit of performance, right, Bernard? Uh, if we would change to the classic scheduler, um, um, the VM fleet would get more processor resources let's let's say that mm -hmm. and we did a little bit of a video about uh, how 
the VM fleet is running on this host with the classic scheduler. You have to decide if you want the last bit out of VM fleet benchmarking and go to the classic scheduler, or you stay with the core scheduler. It's a scheduler Microsoft. Um, um, it's a default. Uh, they they heavily uh, um, how you call it say to use that scheduler, not the yeah. old one. They recommend uh, it. I mean, it's the yeah, more the secure, the more secure uh, way for scheduler. operating operating uh, guest virtual machines, right? Yeah. Um, more isolation areas in there. Yeah. So, um, VM Fleet has it. It's its own bench or its own visualization tool yeah we mm -hmm. of course we can go to windows admin center we will see the io mm -hmm. but vm fleet also has its own tooling for that and it's called watch mm -hmm. fleet right watch mm -hmm. fleet cluster yep. and if we just do that i'm on a host of the cluster so if i just do it you see this output here yeah mm -hmm. uh, it's it's showing us the cluster shared volume file system where our vms live yeah remember mm -hmm. we have 35 vms in every volume we have four volumes they are named mm -hmm. like the hosts yeah mm -hmm. but you see here um we see the IOPS, the green mm -hmm. numbers are always the sum of all hosts. And then we see the IOPS per host. And this is uh, the read and the write uh, mm -hmm. IOPS. Then we have a, a column for the read IOPS, for mm -hmm. the write IOPS. Then mm -hmm. we have the bandwidth in megabyte per second. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then read and write. And mm -hmm. for us, the important things are the read and the write latency right. and the queues, the mm -hmm. read and the write queues. So you see here, there's mm -hmm. nothing going on. I started 140 VMs and there's yep. really not much there. This mm -hmm. is because if we look into a VM, mm -hmm. just let's see here. We yeah, saw they're it idling, right? They, uh... Yeah, they, they are not allowed to do something. They are in mm -hmm. pause mode. And I, I I did a little bit of a joke in the last video that the, the developer of VM Fleet has a little bit of a color problem because a red pause is in red. Mm -hmm. uh, it means usually red means error. It's not an error here. It's yeah, the pause. They, they are waiting uh, for the allowance to do storage stress and i we, think we it didn't is give it. you know the a traffic light right so red means stop. It's red. don't go okay <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe you're yeah, right may, may, maybe yeah, yeah. But... okay so first let's talk about this watch cluster mm -hmm. watch cluster or watch the m fleet cluster has a lot of it can show a lot of different mm. information about what's going on and there are there are nine packets yeah so if we do this watch cluster there are some options we can run it remotely mm. not or for another cluster we yep. can specify how often it updates uh, the information on the screen let's say we mm. do it every three seconds and mm. then there is another uh, option called sets and mm -hmm. uh, this what we see here the csv fs is one set mm -hmm. so if we do a uh, show me all sets yeah okay there are nine mm -hmm. and we do that uh, it can't uh, it can't put it in this powershell window without scrolling so yeah. we had we have to downgrade the font size Okay. We, will, we, will, yeah. we will not use all of them, but just to mm. show you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I yeah. do it bigger here, I I know that you know that, Bernhard. Um, yeah, but I, do, we, do we really need all of it? I mean, would it be... Okay. If, if we uh, would do a deep dive and really, mm -hmm. really, 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 really go into mm -hmm. it, maybe. But mm -hmm. I usually don't use all of them. Mm -hmm. I use Which... the CSV FS. Okay. Yeah, if we have caching devices, I also use a software storage bus cache. Mm -hmm. We see now so NVMEs here. in front of SSDs, HDDs, and SSDs. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. We don't have that. We have a flat NVMe design, so we, nothing will go on in this packet. So okay. we don't show mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Then we have the software bus layer. That's interesting. I mm -hmm. I um, I include it. Then we have the software bus layer local. We have it remote. Mm -hmm. We have we have an SMB server. 
They mm -hmm. asked to the bandwidth. Here are some numbers communal, mm -hmm. uh, from different packets. And mm -hmm. we have the Hyper-V CPU usage. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. And mm -hmm. we have the SMB transport. So I usually show this, mm -hmm. uh, CSVFS. If we have caching devices, I would add the S yeah. SSP cache. Yeah. Uh, if not, uh, and anyway, I, I do the S SPL and I do the Hyper-V CPUs. Mm -hmm. yeah? But you can choose from what you want, but that is what I usually do. And that's uh, mm. all the information I need. So and these values specify... come from the performance counters, right? So these are exactly. ingested, ingested from the performance counter. So if you want to see what everything is, you might, you know, go to Perfmon, load up the drivers from that category, right? And then, yep. um, and then um, dig for yourself for the, yep. uh, for the description, right? Okay. So uh, let me say something about the performance counters. Sometimes mm -hmm. the systems mm -hmm. are so busy that they yeah. um, they can't read the performance counters remotely. Then you have maybe yeah. uh, not a number here. That's not that doesn't right. mean it's it's defect, but uh, it, there's yeah. a lot of work that this script does and mm -hmm. uh, uh, has to sum up everything. So it needs some time, and sometimes sometimes the time is not enough to mm -hmm. do that. So. Don't worry. Yeah, sometimes, yeah, and maybe, the, you know, adding the a higher sample interval or getting less counters may help you yeah. or might be might be helpful on this one, yeah. right? Not to overload uh, the system with uh, okay. dragging performance counters. Exactly. Okay. And one, one mm. more information, if you, for example, turn off uh, hosts or reboot mm -hmm. them, mm -hmm. uh, it can't read the values. And mm -hmm. it will do that try to do it multiple times but there is usually a time where then nothing is shown anymore mm -hmm. so that doesn't mean there is no io in your cluster anymore but the script gave up so you mm -hmm. stop it and start it again and you have counters so okay. i usually also mm -hmm. test uh, maybe if i have a four node cluster the grand final uh, finale in my tests are turning off two of the nodes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And showing what the VMs are doing, for example, we can maybe do that here too in an in an additional video. <laughs> because like this the, will be long, yeah. Like the finale, uh, finale, yeah. uh, final, the, final, final the, exercise. The grand, <laughs> the grand finale. So the grand um, finish. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, so, yeah. So they are currently in pause mode. So I would assume that there is also some sort of a action mode. Um, it is. It is. So we can so but, we can say clear. Yeah, but before you do clear, what are we going to test, right? Because I mean, we, yeah, remember the, the iometer test? We we spent some time on defining the load pattern, right? Yeah. Um, what which kind of load pattern are we using here? I mean, is we it... will we will look after it. There, there okay. is a there is a um, there is a, a script for that. What the VMs mm -hmm. are doing, but mm -hmm. first let me just clear the pause and okay. see what the system is doing. Mm -hmm. uh, so let me finish my outlook here. It's okay. So what are we seeing, Carson? <laughs> yeah, we see here a lot of mm -hmm. is going on on the host. So uh, mm -hmm. there is something happening. Yeah, but mm -hmm. and we see it here. Yeah, wow. we see it here. Mm -hmm. And we now do the standard test that is Microsoft delivering with VM Fleet. And uh, to be mm -hmm. honest. I don't think this test is very good. If you look here, we have <laughs> 1 million IOPS. Great. Mm -hmm. Really great. So, and we have nearly okay. the same amount in, as read IOPS and right. nearly nothing in write. So, which mm -hmm. system has only reads? Uh, if you want to stress your system, you have to add a bunch of writes, right? I know, so I here, know which system, the sales system. The it's this, yeah, it's a marketing or sales <laughs> yeah. system. It's doing well. We get our one million IOPS. Everybody's mm -hmm. happy, but mm -hmm. you don't know how it's really behaved. So yeah. you see here um, a lot of we, we do we we move five gigabytes of IO, but it's mainly local because the VMs mm -hmm. are running mm -hmm. on the owner of the volume and mm -hmm. it reads everything local, so we don't mm -hmm. have to use our network heavily. Mm -hmm. That will that will will be done when we do a lot of writes. And here you see our latencies are not even mm -hmm. the writes are not even mm -hmm. so good. Mm -hmm. And there are not very many. So what is mm -hmm. this thing doing? Yeah? Mm -hmm. So we have a when we go to 
the collect volume. So I'm here mm -hmm. now at a, at the system with a GUI mm -hmm. uh, and we go remotely to one of our node, C dollar cluster storage collect. Mm -hmm. Our VM fleet installed here the control directory, the flag, the result Correct. and the tools. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if we look in the control directory, we see a run.ps1. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. And this is the file that the virtual machines like the one in the back are getting and evaluating, right? Exactly, what... uh, loading and running, right? Mm -hmm. So what, yeah. what did I do now? I thought I opened it and then, oh, we do. We, we didn't We didn't want to run it, we want to yes. show it, right? Uh, yeah. So this is the default file that is done mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. it's using mm -hmm. this using speed, speed. speed, yeah? Correct. With mm -hmm. a lot of options, yeah? Mm -hmm. And you can create your own file or you can modify this file. So what, mm -hmm. what, what does this file do? So in, in line three, Mm -hmm. We have our tests. So we have some variables here. Dollar B is the block size. So it's mm -hmm. 4K. I, mm -hmm. I usually like more to do 8K and I will do mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Then so it's not buffer size, right? It is uh, because in line number two, it says buffer size. Yeah, buffer size no, alignment, but, but yeah, it's yeah. it's in mm. K, so it's it's doing 8K mm. uh, writes and reads and it's mm. aligned and everything. So then we have the number of threads. What is a thread? Mm. It's like the worker. If you remember IO meter, we had I think eight workers, right? I eight mm. IO streams that are doing IO in parallel. Mm. This test in the moment is only doing one IO stream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, but this IO stream has 32. Mm -hmm. uh, it's allowed to have 32 outstanding IOs. So it can do wow. read, write, read, mm. read, read, read. In this example, it would do read, 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 read. Yeah. And if the 32nd read is not, or the first read is not back when the 32nd is put in the queue, then mm. we would wait a bit. Yeah. yeah. So this is, we will. So the final, the final is, numbers will be calculated un, until the last request has been moved from the queue, right? So everything, yeah. okay. Yeah, I think so, yes. So mm -hmm. I usually do with VM fleet, I do a 30% write test, okay. not a 0%. So we will have 70% mm -hmm. read, 30% yeah. write. Mm -hmm. And I will go to the old values because mm -hmm. I know our cluster should behave with mm. the old test. This is a new one. They have a new pattern. The All old right. pattern was eight threads, mm -hmm. 20 outstanding mm -hmm. IOs per thread, 30% mm -hmm. write. And I usually take the 4K. There, There is an example in the old VM fleet. It's called a run demo 7030. Uh, mm -hmm. And I copied that usually and uh, modified it to 8K, not 4K. Uh, mm -hmm. And we will simulate the same test. So this is a mm -hmm. test okay. I've done in hundreds or even thousands installations. Uh, and yeah. I know my numbers. So what, what a, a system I, with yeah. a, a, a specific design should be normal in that system. And I think it's yep. an important piece, right? Because I mean, depending on what your of which parameters you use, the test could be completely different, and the numbers could be completely different. Exactly. So you you want to compare apples with apples and not with pears, yeah. Right. So therefore, um, be sure that you you know always use the same value, right? So um, exactly. So uh, you can use different values. Yeah, you yeah. can make up your own test, but we defined ages yeah. ago let's say i think <laughs> 2015 or so yeah I, that's how long i do storage based direct even before windows server 2016 was out uh, i i did already pocs <laughs> at customers with storage bases direct yeah, yeah. so i defined uh, somewhere around that time frame what test we do and now we mm. do the same test every time and we have so many tests done so we yeah. We see maybe there's something wrong in the cluster, and uh, we talk about that later. So if I now would change my pattern, mm -hmm. I start fresh, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. but if we do that now, um, it will mm -hmm. kill the cluster, yeah, because we have we have 140 VMs doing mm -hmm. eight threads in each VM, with each thread has 20 outstanding IOs. I can save mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. I do that, yep. and mm -hmm. if we look look at the numbers. Oh, what I was think that? you might need to use a different tool. Um, it might be. No, 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 no. There is a trick for that. To just, to just delete it here. <laughs> then you save it again. 
<laughs> yes, you, so you seems that you spent quite some time with it. Yes, I did. So uh, now we have a new run file. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. It's they should load it mm -hmm. automatically. We, we, yeah, automatically, they, mm -hmm. we should see that here. Come on, you see here stopping reason new run file. It will mm -hmm. load. It will copy the new run PS one into the VM, mm -hmm. and then it will starting that test. But we don't okay, see nice. any numbers here, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. So we go to our this system here. Mm -hmm. And now we see uh, a completely destroyed system. Yeah? <laughs> so this is not what we what we want to see. We yeah. see a lot of IOPS. There were more yeah. before, but uh, we see we have 260,000 right IOPS. And mm -hmm. before we did 4K, now we do 8K. So we yeah. move much more data, nearly but double where, the data. Yeah, yeah, but where is the where is the point where you say it's not yeah, looking the good? The problem is here. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you could say, oh, great, I have now a system that can push 860,000 8K random IOs mm. and 30% are right. Fantastic, mm. but you can't mm. use it because we have a write latency in the storage layer. It's not even the VM. In the VM, it's even worse, mm. where we have every write has a latency of, let's say, 8 to 40 milliseconds wow. and mm. it will get maybe worse because the queues here mm -hmm. there are over a thousand ios are still waiting to be processed right mm. yeah so this is this is really too much and um if you download the old vm fleet and just do yeah. the tests you have the same same uh yeah, same result. Uh, you you don't really measure a system that you mm. can still use. Yeah, you just and you could all, yeah. throw. So, yeah, you throw a lot of I/O on it, and it, it's not useful. But you can you can show off your numbers here. So we want but to have. You could a system. also yeah. You could yeah. also argue. I mean, look at the uh, host's uh, total CPU usage. Right, it's it's above ninety percent, which is, I think, not a very yeah healthy it's, uh, it's <laughs> even worse you see here yeah, yeah, it has yeah. problems to show yeah. the numbers you see here we have 100 percent cpu load yeah, yeah. Uh, the system is toast yeah but we yeah. will now mm -hmm. change it because mm -hmm. i want to see here decent numbers so i want mm -hmm. to see maybe a write latency of one millisecond max three milliseconds but usually around one mm. millisecond or okay. better below and then we would we would uh, i would like to see what we get here so we will not get maybe eight hundred eighty thousand, but we will mm. get more than five hundred thousand. and the, the system is still mm -hmm. responsible we can work with it and so on and that's, that's the important number for me not this mm. Yeah, this crazy stuff here. So yeah, so I mean, that? you want you wanna you wanna approach the values where you could still say, hey, this is the system where it behaves well, where I get decent performance. Maybe I should not run more virtual machines with exactly. uh, with more IOPS on it because the system will get toasted. Right? Um, so exactly. How how are you going to do that? Yeah. So uh, in the past, I uh, I added uh, in the. Um, in the uh, PowerShell run scripts, uh, there was mm -hmm. not an option to limit the I/O than a, mm -hmm. that a VM could do, but mm -hmm. disk speed already could do that. So you had to add a, a parameter minus G, mm -hmm. and then a weird, a weird number. So you had to add the bytes a thread would do per millisecond. Mm -hmm. So I had okay. I had to calculate how much an IOP uh, when mm -hmm. I want to have 1,000 IOPS in my VM. Mm -hmm. I had to calculate how much bytes would that be per thread per millisecond. It's mm -hmm. not too complex, but now it's much easier. You see here in our run script, we have a <laughs> dollar IOPS. Yeah. It's uh, it's masked out, so it's not used in the moment mm -hmm. but this number is again per thread so mm -hmm. we uh, they calculate the iops per thread if i would use 500 times 8 mm -hmm. we would allow our vm to do 4000 iops, IOPS. Yeah? yeah so okay, we total. we do that yeah mm -hmm. we we save it and this time it saves it right no error nice mm -hmm. um, and if we look in our vm we don't mm -hmm. have any open Let's click okay. here. Yeah. Yeah. It takes a while. It's still busy. Our nodes are still very busy. <laughs> you see it here. So mm -hmm. 
635. Hmm. The VMs are not at uh, German time, so I don't know <laughs> if there was a reload. <laughs> yeah, from the timing, I don't, I, I yeah, don't no, know. Yeah, it is. No, it is. See, yeah. it, 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 the system is a bit slow. The reaction mm. is slow because it's really working at 100%. It, it's toast, as you said, right? So it's... Yeah, it's toast. But it will. we will untoast it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that would be, um, you know, that would be the time when you would see that the watch fleet cluster will show a drop maybe, right, go down and then reload and then start again from scratch. Yeah, right? look so, here, it, it, yeah. We, we maybe uh, got the last VM that reloaded the IO mm -hmm. because in the moment we see, so we mm -hmm. have 4,000 um, 4, per VM. Right. Yeah, four thousand IOPS. So you can do math with PowerShell. I I normally don't do that, but it's <laughs> for it's just typing, right? Four thousand mm -hmm. times times thirty five. Mm -hmm. That's one hundred forty thousand per node. Mm -hmm. And you see here one hundred forty, one hundred thirty eight, one hundred forty, forty. This is a bit slow. It will mm -hmm. it will catch up maybe. So um, you see here. Getting closer. Three of the four systems are already doing 100, uh, roughly around 140,000 IOPS, exactly mm -hmm. what we allowed it. And if you look here, it's 560,000 IOPS. Mm -hmm. Look here. Look here. We have wow. a right oh. latency mm -hmm. around 0 0.4 milliseconds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the queues are manageable Not, so yeah. there are 17 iops there the average mm -hmm. queue depth it's of course it's busy but mm -hmm. you can still work with it we could start an io meter in the, in another vm maybe mm -hmm. we do that and we see that it still works it's we can still work with our vms and you see here we have a little mm -hmm. bit cpu left no? yep. so we can increase our iops if we mm -hmm. want to and we will do that because i want to show you so uh, maybe we go to 600 all right mm -hmm. so what i usually do when i the customer i i look for the system i mm -hmm. increase the ios that the vm can do um unless to a point where we get around let's say one millisecond and then we have still a decent system it's very busy and then we see the IOPS. So usually you should get, depending on what systems you have, what uh, what storage systems you have, how much nodes you have, what your mm -hmm. network is. But when we talk about a four node cluster mm -hmm. with let's say 225 gigabit network between the nodes, more is even better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for our east west traffic, our SMB3 traffic, we have 225 gigabit NICs. Um, and you have decent storage, you should see 400, 500,000 8K IOPS full random with 30% write, uh, write, uh, and 70% read. Yeah, and your latencies should be around one millisecond. So this system is doing very well. We have 670,000, still below one millisecond. Um, and you see here, every system is doing 160,000, nearly 170,000. So we can mm -hmm. play around a little bit more and say maybe uh, let's do 700. Yeah, and then and maybe just to mention this, I mean, this is all full random, right? So you have it. Um, it's in... full random, yeah. Uh, and really uh, it, yeah, the the it, it was the R uh, character in the run file, right? So yeah. you could specify a sequential, but you know. Uh, yeah, and you yeah. can test other block size. If you mm -hmm. increase your block size, of course, um, much more data is moved. So here is more data, and uh, then of course your latency goes up because a write takes longer. And uh, yeah, the disk can only do so much, uh, so they can't, they can't, uh, you can't write a one megabyte uh, block in the same time than a 4K block. The other one mm -hmm. is 250 times bigger, right? Mm -hmm. So it takes longer. Yeah? But you mm -hmm. see here now, now we are over a millisecond mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. we are at 70 80 um so maybe it will come down a bit but now mm -hmm. we are nearly 200 000 per 
Mm -hmm. node. So this is, we get to a point where the system then can't handle the I.O. anymore yeah. and the write queues get longer and longer and then the latency also gets mm -hmm. up and up and up. So this is too much, mm -hmm. but uh, it's just playing around a bit with the points. So if we go down to 650, maybe the mm -hmm. system can handle that. And always remember, this is per thread. So times eight, that's mm -hmm. what our single VM is doing. We have 35 mm -hmm. on every system. So I'm still amazed what storage mm -hmm. spaces direct and Azure Stack HCI can handle mm -hmm. SIO. We are talking 140 VMs here. Yeah? Right. 140 VMs are really killing the system. No? Okay, so... Cool. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a cool thing. I mean, there is one thing, and I know you might say, hey, um, should we really want to do this? But I, I also like, you know, the storage course flow command let for um, for um, for having a look at the disks, uh, right, or the volumes. Yeah, we have different uh, possibilities what mm -hmm. we can use. So one thing would be using old old uh, possibilities like the storage cross mm -hmm. um there is we can we can see uh, um mm. uh, let's let's oh. do it get storage cross flow yeah mm -hmm. it mm. will show us numbers i do this a little bit bigger so that we have more space so that we can sh see more columns it will show us for every virtual disk in the system so it's not per vm it's per mm -hmm. virtual disk there are counters there that are um, the system will just um, take the counters per virtual disk and the mm -hmm. storage cross flow or the storage cross policies are not are usually to limit or guarantee storage bandwidth for VHD access. Mm -hmm. So for example, um, if you have users, if you are a hoster and you want to guarantee or you want you, you don't want people that use all your storage bandwidth, why mm -hmm. why because, because they do disk speed tests or whatever. Um, and then of course other VMs are maybe suffering, other customers maybe are suffering. So you can limit what a VM, what a virtual disk can get on uh, as mm -hmm. storage. Mm -hmm. How many data can be moved, how many IOPS can be done. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you can also guarantee IOPS and uh, uh, bandwidth. For example, if you have some SQL VMs and you want to guarantee that these VMs get more IOPS uh, if they need it than other VMs. Yeah? Mm -hmm. This is usually uh, why we have these storage cross uh, policies. But we can mm -hmm. also use them to see what's going on. Mm -hmm. And but. You have to know some things. These numbers that we have here are not the numbers that are just from the time where we uh, where we say, where we um, enter the command. These mm. are five minute um, uh, averages. So in the last five minutes, we had an, a, a latency of 1.8 millisecond in mm. the in this VHDX. We had a we had a, a 5,141 IOPS per second over the last five minutes. If we would stop the VMs now, we mm. would see that the initi initiator IOPS would go down, but they would mm. not be zero. Yeah, They would yeah. go down, down, down. And after five minutes, the VM not doing nothing, that would be at mm -hmm. 10 or whatever. Yeah, And so mm -hmm. if you start the VMs, it's the same. You They increase uh, over the five minutes. And this is also the initial bandwidth, right? So these mm -hmm. are five-minute average values. Very okay. important, okay? Mm -hmm. Another thing that we can use is our beloved admin center. <laughs> yeah, so I, and you know, I have my beef with some things in admin center, but <laughs> this part I really like. So uh, yeah. the visualization of... Um, of data, I really like. We, we get nice graphs, and mm -hmm. our admin center is maybe a bit slower now. Why? Because we are doing a humongous amount of data is moved around, and we have mm -hmm. a huge, uh, a huge processor load. But if we just go to the volumes here, we see mm -hmm. here, yeah, we are on the summary of all volumes. We see the IOPS, the latency, mm -hmm. and the throughput mm -hmm. in the whole system. 
Yeah, and yep. these are 10 second values. So they, these are not five minute averages. These yeah. are 10 second averages, still averages, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you can, uh, this is good for an overview. So we see 5.5 gigabytes of data are moved in the moment. We have a, a, an average latency of half a millisecond. Yeah, but mm -hmm. it's average. That's mm -hmm. over all reads and all writes over the last 10 seconds per uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we want more detail, we go to inventory. Mm -hmm. And most people don't know that, but you can modify the columns that are shown yeah. here. And I already did that. So you see here, we have IOPS yeah. here per volume and we have the average latency. If you press this column picker, we could also add here the total throughput. Mm -hmm. This we kick out, save. So now we see how many data is moved per second. Mm -hmm. Again, I think 10 second average. Mm -hmm. We see our latency and we see the IOPS. Yeah. Um, but also it's 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 always a sum. So it's a read and write IOPS. Yep. It's the latency over every IO in this volume. And this mm -hmm. is a total throughput. If mm -hmm. we click on the volume, mm -hmm. we have also charts here and now we see read and write IOPS we see mm -hmm. read and write latency we see read and write throughput yeah mm -hmm. and here we really see nice it's very smooth the latency the write latency is of course mm -hmm. longer normally it's longer than the read latency so we have 0 0.2 milliseconds read and we have one millisecond write yeah and we see the data more is read than written it should be 70 30 and also here the iops and now uh, now we can even go deeper with windows admin center and that's also possible with powershell but uh, i like it here with our drives yeah mm -hmm. we can we can we can just go into the drives and you see here i added also you can also add columns here. I added the average latency of the drive. That's read and write. The IOPS of the drive. Yeah, the firmware version is maybe not so interesting here. And the throughput. Mm -hmm. So we can dive into a drive. And I will I will just pick one of the 24 I have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you see here, we will get detailed information per drive. Uh, and uh, I'm still mm -hmm. amazed about that, uh, <laughs> you know, how much data is grasped there. And mm -hmm. this is good to look at. But this mm -hmm. this is also very important if you have a storage system like Storage Basis Direct or Azure Stack HCI. We have a lot of data that is spread over the drive. So if if we imagine, if we have one drive here that is maybe not doing so well it's not defect it's every write every every read is uh, is successfully delivered but it's mm. slower than the others yeah yeah um this because our data is heavily uh heavily spread over the drive imagine one drive has an average latency of 500 microseconds or even one millisecond mm. it will slow down the whole system because there is yeah often data on that drive for the vms so um, we could see that here yeah we mm -hmm. could order about uh, the average latency and we see we have between 80 and 75 that's very near together but if we would see 500 1000 mm -hmm. uh, yeah. microseconds or milliseconds this drive would be bad so and the storage basis direct layer in Azure Stack HCI would even inform us and would say this drive is okay, but it has abnormal latencies. Yeah, we will we will even get an uh, an alert about that, and then you have maybe to change it against a new one. So so mm. to change it. Huh? Okay, so we have a lot of information here. Bernard, do you yeah. want to do you want to see one more one, <laughs> the last, one last one? I love this one. Yeah. You, go, see, you have go, a show go for latency it. and error statistic here. And just till some months ago, uh, there wasn't there was a bug in, in this uh, in this uh, drive latency and error statistic. Um, it was picking some random time span. So mm -hmm. here okay. we see now from today, a week back or five days back. 
Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what's interesting to me. Not, not for example, uh, some uh, a week from November. Yeah, mm -hmm. I want mm -hmm. I want the last data. Yeah, so this mm -hmm. is fixed now, and now it's really useful. You see here, in this time frame. Till now, and from the 8th of uh, May to the 12th, and today is the 12th, we have this drive has done half a, uh, it's a billion, right? Half a billion IOs. Mm -hmm. So 499 million IOs. Mm -hmm. uh, it, there were 368 gigabyte read and 1.65 terabyte written. The average latency, 23.2 <laughs> microseconds. Amazing. So now we can see here, do we have IOs over two milliseconds? And we had no slow IOs, we had no failed IOs. So we can see every, every latency over two. No. Every two latency seconds. over yeah, two, two seconds. Is, it would be, it would be amazing, right? <laughs> but over yeah. four milliseconds, there are no. some. Mm -hmm. Of the 500 million, 273 IOs were over four milliseconds. Mm -hmm. yeah? So you can see, and if we go to 256, 1.5 million of the 500 are 0.3 percent, so three per mil. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you you can dive into your storage and just see how one drive is doing, and this is all coming from the cluster performance history. So mm -hmm. cool. really great stuff. I like it. I like mm -hmm. it a lot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So Bernard, <laughs> I think we should make a stop here. Otherwise, you won't finish, right? Uh, I mean, well, so now, um, yeah, I think this is a cool exercise that um, I believe everyone should do when uh, when building up an Azure Stack HCI cluster, see and measure the performance of their individual system. And that's, you know, sort of the difficulty is, I think, you know, to tell where the difficulties are or, or, or if you, what you're seeing is the correct thing, but um, you enlightened us. Um, thanks for that. A bit. And, um, and a bit that, yeah, there is, there is more information. Let me add at, at least mm -hmm. uh, one, one thing. Huh? So uh, if we have um, RDMA network cards that are doing RDMA traffic, uh, mm -hmm. we talked about that. We have two kinds of RDMA. We have IWAP. IWAP is the safer part because the, the network cards use TCP IP to transfer the data between the cards. So in your network, you don't have to configure the switches and so on. But mm -hmm. in the moment, uh, 23, uh, we have a little mm -hmm. bit of a problem. There are not much vendors out there who do IWAR as mm -hmm. a protocol. So most of the installation use Rocky and mm -hmm. Rocky RDMA over converged Ethernet, you have to configure your switches and you have to configure the host because basically um, mm -hmm. Rocky is InfiniBand in Ethernet or uh, InfiniBand in UDP. So, mm -hmm. uh, and you you set up everything and you do your live migration test and you do maybe your IO meter uh, VM, uh, but you don't get um, get problems in your network. You don't see parser frames. Yeah, that's important. Mm -hmm. um, if a switch can't handle the RDMA traffic, it has to send mm -hmm. pause frames to stop the sender so that, that it doesn't uh, drop packets because mm -hmm. it is not allowed to drop packets. Uh, with VM fleet, you can generate pause frames because we have a lot of traffic between the hosts and there are we have a three-way mirror. There is a lot of data written to the host from different senders and mm -hmm. you get congestion. So if you use a VM fleet and you look at your switches and you look at your host, you usually should see pause frames mm -hmm. uh, for the PFC classes. Otherwise, maybe something is not correctly configured. Yeah. So VM fleet is a good, a great test to really look at that. Now, now I will stop. Uh, I, I think we did enough with our series. We went through a lot of things. Now you see with yeah. 670,000 IOPS, it's working like a charm. That's the sweet spot here. That's fine. Cluster is okay. Mm -hmm. um, we showed done, a lot. I would we, say, right? Yeah, we <laughs> well, showed the whole done. installation. We gave mm -hmm. you a lot of um, real world experience. So you should be able to install your cluster and be happy with it. Yeah. Final words. All good. Take care and uh, have a great time.